Okay, let's take a look at one of the more common pages that you'll, you'll, you'll be using in your school. Let's take a look at our student list. So on the left-hand navigation over here, again, we have a very simple, flat, uh, clean, intuitive navigation uh, menu on the left. If I go to my students list, uh, this is sort of a list page. And this is where you'll do a lot of work uh, for with your students or prospects or whatever the case may be. And this is designed to help you uh, take action on your student lists and help you filter whichever type of a list you want. So let's take a look at that. First of all, the first thing to note here is I have these filters. Um, these filters are going to help you create the exact list of students that you're looking for and to be able to slice and dice that list very robustly. So for example, and there is a hide filters button here. If you see that, that that'll it, it maybe expanded or contracted uh, just like this. So we're gonna look at these filters Right now, you'll see that I can filter by styles, by teams, by programs, by classes, by rating, by SMS ability, whether they're opt-in or not of SMS on a, uh, text messaging, active or inactive. Uh, I can filter by their agreement types. Uh, I can filter by their uh, testing eligibility, or I can just turn off all the filters altogether. Now, by default, when you come to the Your Students page, we've set this by default to show you your active students. You can see how these filters are gray. That means they're actually turned off right now. They're actually not filtering by these at all. But you'll see the blue one is active. That means that I'm filtering by my active students. Now, if you wanted both active or inactive, you just tick that. You tick them both. If I only want inactive, I just turn off the active one, and now I have just all my inactive students, right? So for this intense, for this, for this purpose, I want just all my active students. Let's say that I, I'm trying to promote a special class coming up, or maybe a demo team, or something like that. So I'm just going to select all my active students. I want them in this in this argument for every class and style and everything. So then I'm going to go to my action button, my group action button, and I have a couple different ways I can do this. Um, you, you see, if I if I scroll down the page. My results are that I have 28 filtered results. I have 28 active students uh, in this particular application. It's a test application. So I have 28 active students that meet that criteria. So let's say I want to send them all an email. Well, we've created a shortcut in the group actions button. So if you drop down your group actions, it says send an email to all 28 contacts. So I can hit that and it will bring up my email function. Now, obviously, I can only email people who have email addresses, right, or who have opted in and not opted out. So you'll see here that it says only 23 of these 28 people are able to receive the message. So we're doing some calculations on the back end for you so that you can, you'll can you know exactly kind of what's happening. So then I can just pop in my subject line. I can pop in my message. I can add an attachment. Um, I can use a, an email template if you want to use a template. And then I can uh, preview that message and that's the preview and then I can click send to send the message so again it's a very quick way to take action on my lists of students so let's drill into that slightly deeper obviously for my group action menu I can also send an SMS I can manage the students ranks and credits I can assign them to a team I can remove them to, from a team I can assign a style, assign a class, assign a program. I can print them. I can export the contact information, et cetera, et cetera. So I have all these tools available in my group action menu. This is very powerful, and we're actually going to be adding many new tools to this as well over time. But uh, right now, uh, this is sort of your how you'll be working with your student list. So let's walk through another permutation. Let's say that I only wanted my uh, students of a specific style. So I already have active students selected. Now I can go over and filter by styles, and I can turn on my filter, basically, and I can decide which style I want. So let's say I just want my kickboxing students and my summer camp students, something like that. Okay, so now I've got I've got that list. I've got 11 people who are both in kickboxing and in in my summer camp, uh, if that's set up as a style, you know, for you. And now I can I can again then go back and email them, or I can send them an SMS or whatever I want. Now I can also subsegment this group really any way you want uh, by using these filters. But I can also tick boxes that I want. So let's say I wanted to send Rebecca Black a message and Lee, uh, Chris Lee, and let's say Betty Purple. Now I've selected three. When I go back to my group actions button, you'll see email three contacts. So the filter is very smart. Uh, the filter knows the people who meet the criteria, and it also knows the people who you've selected. So now since I've selected three people, I can email three contacts. Let's, uh, let's turn that filter off. Uh, now here's where it gets a little tricky. 
Um, you see that on, on the right side, I see show 10 entries. Well, I have 28 entries, right? So I could just drop that down and I could say, okay, show all entries, right? So now I've got all of those entries on one page. It makes it kind of easy to see the information from a top down. And I can just tick this tick all box, this box at the top that will, that will check everybody on the list, uh, everybody on that page. And then I can do actions with them too. Maybe I want to um, uh, assign a class maybe, uh, or I, maybe I want to email them or whatever the case might be. So I can do that. Now, if I, if I were only showing 10 entries, for example, and I see that I have three pages, um, if I use the group tick box here, you're really ticking only the ones that are visible on this page. So this is a, 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 a fundamental um, feature that you want to take a look at. Um, obviously, if I drop my box down, down now, it says email these 10 contacts. So I'm just ticking the ones that are visible. This works just like Gmail does, just like many, many, many um, online uh, searches. So you have to be you have to be conscious of that. And if you want to tick all of your people, everybody who meets the criteria, you can simply not tick anybody. And we know that you want to do an action with all of them, or you can uh, you can show them all on your screen and tick the top box. Okay, so that will take everybody on in that view. So that's pretty clever. So these filters, again, I can filter by styles, I can filter by teams. Let's say I want to filter by no teams, people who are not the member of a team. Maybe I'm trying to promote one of my teams. I'm trying to promote my demo team. So no teams means people who are not a member of any team. They have no teams in their record. So this is all the people who are not members of teams. So then I could, let's say, send them an email about how they join my demo team, whatever the case might be. Um, let's turn that one off. Uh, filter by program follows exactly the same logic. Um, let's say I have people who are part of just my black belt club and just my orientation program, something like that. So now I can, I can message them as well. So again, very cool. These filters are very rich and robust, and we're actually going to be adding functionality to these as time goes on as well. So we're really excited about that. But now this will give you all the functionality that you need to create basically any list that you want. So those are the filters and the actions. Oh, and don't forget uh, the little search feature right here below the filters. If you know the student's name or a part of their name or even their phone number or a part of their phone number, you can search your entire list by that, your entire student list by that. So you just tick in here and let's say I want uh, Apple. So APPL or even APP starts to get me there. A gets me there, right? So it's listening to every keystroke that you put into the search area. So let's say I want uh, Smith. There you go, SMI, that gets me the guys that I'm looking for. So this is a very cool little filter. And then again, I also can use that search by, uh, let's say, a phone number. Do we have any 800 numbers? No, no 800 numbers. Let's try 555. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, here's, here's a phone number with some fives in it. Let's do 88. Yeah, so these are all people who have 88s in their phone number, et cetera. And we're also adding to this functionality, searching by their email. So some very cool, very smart, quick access to your, your student list built into this little filter, uh, built into this little search area. Uh, number next is the population map. Uh, this is a really cool tool that helps you sort of identify where your students are coming from. So this will give you a map, pinpoints on a big Google map, of where your students, uh, where their addresses are. So you can take a look at the map and you can zoom in and zoom out. It's a, it's, it's a pretty, pretty responsive little map. And this will tell you where your students live, like where their addresses are. So this might give you some really in interesting intelligence on uh, how you target your marketing. So obviously, you know, there's one student way out here. Well, there's only one from way over there. So maybe we should target our marketing where more of our students are coming from. Or maybe we should look at the elementary schools where our students are coming from, things like that. So that's what the student map is all about. Uh, next, we've talked about the group actions and we've talked about using the filters to filter the list that you want and then using the group actions to then do something with them. But you can also, uh, apply individual actions. So let's say, for example, this uh, Sean Apple, uh, I have an action button here too, just by Sean's contact record. So here I can send him just, just him an email. I can manage his ranks and credits. I can use, I can send an e-request, 
uh, based on Sean's uh, agreements, the agreements that he's a part of. Uh, I can promote him. I can assign him to a team, right? I can, I can execute any of these actions individually on any individual student as well, which is very cool. I also have a little email shortcut button here. Uh, we know that uh, I like to communicate with my students by email quite frequently, so we have a little shortcut. You can click their little email button here, and that will uh, invoke the email, the inline email editor as well. So you can then pop, you can shoot him off a, a quick email onesie twosie. Uh, there's also, if a student, for example, Francis Galton here, looks like he has his uh, mobile phone entered and opted in, so I can tick that and I can send him a quick text message as well, which is also very cool. And then this third little icon here, this little um, timeline icon, this is actually pretty slick. Um, if you click that timeline icon, this will show you uh, in, a chrono in chronological order everything that's happened with that student in the system. So on uh, 519, he was promoted, his karate style was promoted from first rank to second rank. Uh, on the 18th, one day before, it looks like he created a new student agreement for 12 months at $1,000. Um, it looks like the same day, again, this is test data, right? Uh, we have a new buyer agreement, the same buyer agreement, so he must be the student and the buyer. So this, this timeline is actually a really cool tool to help you track back what's happened with each of your students should ever, should ever you have a question or you wanted to look back at their rank or agreement or uh, any type of history uh, like that. The, the, the next little item here, obviously, is that person's name. And the name obviously takes you to their full profile, to their student profile. So now I'm looking at that student. Obviously, I'm missing his picture. So it'd be great if I click this button and put a picture of him in there. But this student is now, I, I now have access to the student details. I can see his agreement history. I can look at his, uh, his authorized pickup and health information, his, his classes, teams, ranks, and styles, his fundamental profile information and then all of his um, uh, student information down here below, which again, I can qu quite easily go in here and, and, and fill these things out if, if I'm missing some uh, information. Uh, so that is the student list page, top to bottom. We have amazing filters that are really, really powerful and really useful uh, to help you filter and get the list of people that you're looking for. We have a really powerful action menu that you can create actions on groups of people or individual people, depending on how you like. Uh, we have their student profile. We have quick access to emailing and texting, and also their very interesting, um, uh, really kind of a cool feature is their timeline. And then we have their individu individual actions as well. So from this one area, oh, and this population map. So from this one area, you can really manage almost anything you need to manage for any, any group of students or even any individual student. So this is very cool, very powerful. I'm really excited about it, and I hope that uh, you get a lot of use from this. So this is your student list. Thanks much. Speak to you soon.